All right, I call the meeting to order for November the 15th, 2022. Uh, Councillor Bobic is not able to join us tonight. Result of the agenda for the November 15th, 2022 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Powell. All in favor? It's carried. Mr. Poole, you have a director of have it. I caught that. Number three, resolved minutes of the November the 1st, 2022 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, number four. Resolved that this regular meeting be closed and the public hearing on variance order two, 2022 be open. Moved by Councillor Medwood, second by Councillor uh, Boychak. All in favor? It's carried. The purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the following variance, variance application to allow a 12 by 10 deck with railing, wheelchair lift, and a six by 13 concrete pad for the lift. Uh, sorry, the requirements of section 169 of the Planning Act have been adhered to. I request that any person making representation to the hearing state their name and civic address. And being that we do not, I will then uh, ask for the meeting or the uh, um, uh, hearing to be adjourned. 4.2, result that the public hearing uh, be adjourned for the, and resumed to the regular meeting be reopened. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Okay. 4.3, we have a delegation from uh, Communities in Bloom. Welcome ladies, uh, I'll let you introduce yourselves to council and then make your presentation and if there's any questions, we'll take them right after. Okay. Uh, Mayor Jacobson and council, thank you for having us tonight. We are representing the Communities in Bloom Committee. I'm June McKenzie, Phil Friesen and Donelda Mills. Who are we and what do we want? We are a group of volunteers that took over planting flowers for the town about 10 years ago. The town gives us a sum of money, which this year was $5,000, and we do the rest from the planning, purchasing, planting, and maintenance. The greenhouses do the large uh, pots out on Highway 10 Boulevard, plus Highway 83 entrance to town. Also, the hanging baskets downtown and the tiered planter on Highway 83. The volunteers do the cemetery, the Legion Park, the Rotary Park, Arena, etc. The greenhouse owners have forewarned us that prices will definitely be going up for 2023. Uh, you have uh, this year's financial statement. Uh, shows you where our expenses are and a comparison at the bottom and that's just for the flowers 2021 was four thousand and eleven dollars 2022 this year was five thousand two hundred nineteen dollars which did include some new wire baskets and we do pay the hero club for watering and a few other incidentals Uh, there is money in the bank right now, but we do need some cash available because we do do some projects and some are fundraising projects, which Phil is working on right now is the Memorial Candles, and that money does go to Community and Blooms, so we do have to buy those candles. Uh, in the past, we have purchased the large black pots that are out on the highway. 
And here the committee did application to committee foundations for help. So along the way, it's not always just flowers, but the main money goes to the flowers. If you turn over uh, on the back side of that page, just a little information for you. Uh, we are members of Communities in Bloom. Their slogan is, Growing Great Places Together. Community in Blooms is a volunteer and partnership-driven charitable organization from the municipal to international levels. There is competitive judging, and the judging focuses on civic pride, environmental responsibility, beautification, heritage, and community involvement. Awards are given in Blooms numbered 1 to 5, and if you notice the signs, the entrance of town, we have been awarded five blooms in the past. So it's kind of a feather in your cap. Um, suggestions from our last committee meeting in October. And one was to ask for an increase in the allotted amount to purchase flowers and related items suggesting an additional $1,000. Uh, with that, that would have cover increase in the price of flowers and uh, the possibility of increasing more projects or more beautification for the town. So that's our, our main request. Uh, the second is to replace the rotting railway ties in the Legion Park flower beds, if that's a possibility. And the third one was to encourage for the town to encourage public buildings, offices, and businesses to control weeds and grass in the front entrance. And we're kind of at the uh, conclusion that most staff enter from the back door and don't see the weeds that are growing up in the cracks in the front of their place. Uh, if you have any questions, we can try to answer them. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, um, Did you miss something? Okay. It's already it's been, taken. been taken. Okay, good. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you to your group. And when uh, Councilor Phil Phil Friesen was on council, we uh, talked about how many uh, times that we thanked your group and and on all your efforts uh, for making our parks and areas looking good. Um, but uh, we do thank you for that. I think Councilor White wanted to go first. Could have been second. First, second. <clears throat> Ditto. Uh, regardless, uh, where would we be without you guys and your team? It's uh, so appreciated by all of us. I know that. Uh, because I'm just, uh, how, do you, how do you function on $5,611, whatever it is? I am confident that Terry's Greenhouse and Eggies, who get $5,000 out of your budget, have been giving you things at cost or, or been approached to help some small way. Yes, they have. End of discussion. Thank you. Anything further? I would just like to concur those thoughts on thanking you. Uh, we had the provincials down at the Legion this summer, and it was there were so many comments on what a beautiful facility we have, and much in part to what you guys do. I do have actually some treated. Uh, what is it? Sixteen foot by six inch, painted in that green, like we replaced all the benches in that down there. There's some extra. I don't know if uh, Director of Recreation Brendan Florchuk could speak to that. If there's, I, I don't know if they have plans for it or if it could possibly use for planter boxes. Is what I was gonna try and do out of the leftovers mm -hmm. there. If you want, I don't know. Brendan would like to speak to that. If that yeah. would be something to offer to them, but they are there. Mr. Florchuk, do you want to comment on that at all? Yeah, I'll check with the boys to see if they utilize them for anything, but I didn't think we had any uh, plans for them just because you had mentioned Councillor Wojciech and you wanted to make uh, planter boxes out of them, but do we still have them They're stored in one of our stored facilities, I believe. Okay, so there's an opportunity there as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, as far as your ask goes, it'd be something that we're moving into, you know, uh, budget here in December. And as count uh, former Councillor Friesen knows that the process of which that will uh, work, but definitely will be something that will be considered. Councillor Medford. I am your council rep for your committee, so I would love for you ladies to uh, 
add me to your contact list there so that I can uh, hopefully attend your future meetings and okay great and uh, help you out probably the next meeting won't be too early spring but for sure we'll get a hold of you mm -hmm. yeah no that'll be that'll be perfect go ahead I just had a question on the budget because uh, there was five hundred dollars that was allocated for mileage for back in twenty eighteen. There was four hundred twenty seven dollars that were used for mileage for the van. I guess. Do you know? Is there any plan to use any of our vehicles? Just if that's a potential that could be moved to the grant. That since dollar amount? since COVID, we haven't gone. That would have been moved to conference, which is usually. Well, it was in Morris at one time, Dauphin at another time. We haven't gone since COVID started, so. Is there a plan for this year to go, or no? We won't know that till this, probably, I don't know, January, February, they usually <coughs> announce whether there's going to be one. Okay. And where it is. So, I can't tell you, sorry. Okay. But we would like to go if there's a possibility. What okay. that did was cover mileage and hotel rooms. For, okay. There's usually two of us go if we go. Councilor White. Um, Councilor Medwood being on your team, I'm sure she could ask. I'm not sure her council, but I suspect they would support using the town van if you had one of those trips to do, and that might be handled internally from our end. It might, I can't. But I'm sure she'll ask because she's not afraid to ask him. Go ahead. Just to give council the history, uh, well, a little bit of history, the communities in Bloom used to not operate on the grant. We just kind of covered expenses, but there was no policy there. You know, they didn't want to spend the money, council didn't want to empty checks, so it was a bit of a struggle, so it was decided to just, years ago, to give them a $5,000 grant, and just to say they haven't asked for an increase in that time, so. Wow. So is that a grant through the town? Is that just? A grant from the town to the communities and Bloom committee of $5,000, yeah. Can I ask if you ever apply for other grants? Has uh, other grants to for buying the, the pots and stuff yes yeah. we have oh you have yes from um, mainly community foundation but not like a heritage grant because I know there's some heritage grants for beautification no. too out there no uh, it is a lot of work okay um, we're volunteers all yeah volunteers. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and the town used to do the flowers themselves like the town employees now we're doing that for you I guess Yes. Yeah. No, it's beautiful. I have to say, it's very, it's very. The flowers are all very, it's very beautiful. Out in the boulevard, they're very, very nice. So. Council Mor or Deputy Mayor Morio. Uh, <clears throat> just for myself, thank you very much for all the work you guys do for beautifying our community with flowers and the other projects on there. But in regards to your number three request, I'm sure uh, the town comes springtime. We can put together uh, an information package to give to the businesses to uh, with the recent passing of the noxious weed um, or the use of herbicides to uh, control weeds and that and grass on boulevards uh, if we let the businesses know what their options are now with potential herbicides uh, to look after those weeds and grasses that are popping up along the sidewalks and along their buildings um, if we provide them with a uh, and information circular, well, these are your options of helping beautify your community uh, and gives them the range of the tools that they can use uh, to help remove those unsightly things along the buildings. Councillor White. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. Friesen, Councillor Friesen, uh, I've been uh, reappointed to the Urban Forest Committee, which I've always enjoyed to be honest, and I'm I'm comfortable that if you approach that team, they may consider helping out in some small way, man power, woman power, whatever. Certainly feel free to nudge me, and I can, whenever they call a meeting, I will ask them to consider it. And the other one is the uh, Conservation District. They've been help, helpful in the past also. I know Urban Forest, there's only about three left on that committee, and they're all older than me. And uh, let's get back. I'm not sure we're even going to be doing anything, but appreciate the offer and uh, keep it in mind. Thank you. Go ahead. Have you ever looked into um, possibly engaging with the schools here? 
to see if that might be something that they could incorporate into maybe a gym class or something, getting the kids out at Taylor to go down into the Legion Park and help dig and plant the flowers. And kind of that instills that volunteerism when they're a little bit younger or something. I don't I don't know if that would be too much to undertake or if we could, you know, go out as council and be there and help too, or possibly maybe look to older kids at the high school. There's the um, resource the management resource management class that possibly could I know you know what I mean? Just to help the initial get them in the ground and and that I don't know. I mean I'd be willing to help too if you give me a shout. I have a granddaughter that plants with me. Does that count? Yeah. That's high school. Absolutely. Absolutely. I do. Volunteer. Yeah. Uh, actually, just to piggyback on Councillor Boychuk, I was going to say the high school, usually, they have an environmental um, mm -hmm. program or class, and that might be something uh, if we tap into them, and that mm -hmm. might give us the manpower to get them planted anyways for the Legion Park and other areas. Because I think the pots themselves are done by the greenhouses, right? The pots. Yeah, yes. it's just the uh, yeah the non-movable uh, yeah. planting beds and the stuff, parks. like at the yeah, cemetery, the cemetery and too. parks. The parks and the cemetery. Yeah, so maybe that's something we can look into in one of the meetings is tapping into the school division and seeing if we can't get um, some, some of the schools and the kids involved in helping with that. So it sounds like there's lots of good ideas that come from this side of the room too, so uh, you have our full support. You have one, I have one more comment. I'm okay. sorry it's not community and blue related, but we were talking about the heritage grant. Mm -hmm. Canada Day usually gets one of those if you have to apply before or when? November or December, so here's a heads up, Mr. Brand, Mr. Fedorchuk. Are you listening? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he is, and, and, and you're, you have, uh, you're you having a hard time getting rid of that hat, I see. We missed so. out on it last time. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm just saying, <clears throat> check into it now. Well, thanks for that. What was that date again, November? You have to have it done by when in November? I don't know. I didn't know. I I I'm not there anymore, so <laughs> I didn't look. Okay, I'll find out. Okay, that'd be great. Are you doing Canada Day, Tracy? I believe that will fall under my uh, chair as well. Yeah. <laughs> She'll have help, though. Yes. As always. Yeah. yeah. Good. Well, uh, again, I thank you uh, for coming and, uh, and making your uh, uh, pitch to us and an and update. You know, uh, very important. But uh, like I said, we will have a look at the budget. Uh, in December, January, and uh, and all that. But we do appreciate your efforts and thank the rest of your team. Uh, it's great for our town beautification, and we appreciate it. We do. We really do. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And nice to have you back again. Yeah. 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 Don't be a stranger. It wouldn't be a Tuesday if I didn't have to go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so then uh, moving on, uh, 7, 7 7.1. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Deputy Mayor Morio. Uh, Mr. Harvey, in your section of transportation, it says you. Uh, follow-up meeting with highway superintendent regarding the main street uh, snow removal um, what's the is there any results or uh, so he was saying if we do an agreement this year it would only be three percent they're still working it through on their end so the agreement would be for the same amount as this year uh, but it would likely increase by three percent but that's substantially less than what we spend to clear the snow. Um, so once we get the agreement <coughs> on the next council meeting, and my recommendation would be not to enter into an agreement and just have them clear it. Uh, it doesn't get cleared quite as often, but we do end up spending a fair amount of money more than we get reimbursed. Last year was a extremely heavy snow year, so it was uh, just shy of 60000 that was spent to clear it, and the agreement's only for 13000 So even in a low snow year, it still wouldn't 
cover it unless it was like an extremely low snow year. Okay, so was there any discussions like on the calculations for the snowfall? Because it wasn't it on the previous year's amount or? Uh, they changed it so they no longer do it by snowfall, it's just by a dollar amount. amount. Okay. So maybe that's a discussion we can add to our MIT or MTI agenda with them guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Councilor Medwood. Can you just help me understand? Um, so when we entered into an agreement with them for us to provide the services to clear a road that they're responsible for, you're telling me they didn't pay us what it actually cost us to do the work? Yes, because if they do it, they leave it for a long time. And uh, council at the time wanted it to be cleaned up more often because they would leave it for half the winter and there'd be that ridge there. Um, so there was an agreement Last year was uh, a worse year than normal because it snowed a lot. We had a lot of snowstorms and a lot of them added up. Uh, so the cost to clear it was substantially more than the agreement. Um, and this is just me trying to understand, I guess, what already existed, but what were the terms of the agreement then? Was it not to reimburse us for expenses or was it literally no, a flat rate a, amount? Yeah, just a flat rate amount. This is the amount you get and then you clean it up. You clean up the snow. So they would plow it off to the sides and then we would haul it. And what kind of recourse is there if, um, and again, I'm thinking from the perspective of liability. So what's the recourse if they're only coming in occasionally and not frequently enough and we have another winter snowstorm like we did last year and it's building up where does that liability fall then if there's accidents or injuries uh, to people if we if we don't have an agreement with them it's their road to clean up so okay like so the liability, liability falls to the province then I would tend to go towards not having an agreement myself because we don't want that liability on us, that's for sure. And if we're not being reimbursed for the use of our equipment and staff. I'll let you go, but one of the, it was a fairly large discussion and, and uh, uh, we went through uh, several years of snow piles left on uh, curbside waiting for MI to clear um, the uh, main street where people were climbing over piles of snow and to a point where the business community was getting pretty upset about it. We had several discussions with MI and we had to make some type of a decision. At that time, that was a council decision that made that. It's still standing if this council decides to change that and, and move towards uh, leaving it again uh, for MI to clean it, then I guess that would be a discussion at some point in time for a council to have that discussion. Go ahead. Yeah, just to let, you know, they, they operate on levels of service, so at the time, it may have changed now, but their, their requirements, and they advertise it, you can review these standards, but it's three feet, it's, they, they could leave it on the center line or on the side, in the parking lane, up to three feet. If it got over three feet, they were forced to remove it. In some years, it only got removed once, sometimes twice. And, and just uh, finishing up what I was just saying that um, I agree that MI or the province of Manitoba should be paying us rightfully for what that service is. <clears throat> um, but we also felt, like I said, to make sure that we were providing some help to our community people that were climbing over top of uh, snow banks. Go ahead. I, I um, actually understand that because as a pedestrian and as a person who owns a small low riding car, I feel on both accounts those ridges. But uh, what's the recourse for us then? If they, like, with the way the liability insurance are changing, and my understanding is that's more of a current thing, what's our recourse with the province then? Like, can we not push for them to change their, um, I guess, limits or guidelines yeah. or whatever? based on that li liability. We, we definitely can lobby and, and pressure the, the department or the government to pay up their fair share or the liability piece of it. But they, to counteract you know, the hazards of, of having that ridge there, they, 
They 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 have it on their website. Their their standards are very clear. They they have no qualms about it. Three feet is is the level of service accepted or pay for more service. So you know they they do have um, I guess a something to lean on in the fact that they're making everyone aware that their level of service is this. We don't touch it till it comes to here. So. I'll admit I haven't fully, I've just started to graze the package you sent out, but is that on our list of things for uh, the minister or whoever is responsible for uh, infrastructure? Because, because that meeting is, is going to be separate from the AMM where we are usually like 20 minutes to a half an hour at the most, um, this is going to be a separate meeting that I think that we'll have a little bit more forgiveness as far as the time goes, so I'm hoping, and that's something that we definitely can add. Uh, to that agenda, but if the minister says you have 20 minutes, we got to make sure that we have our priorities in place. And if this is a priority, then we'll take one of the other ones off. But we definitely want to stick to our uh, our uh, our schedule. So your worship, I guess that would be up to you to decide who on this team would have five minutes each, or whatever the number is, so we can do it within the allocated time, as opposed to Dwayne, for example, all of a sudden. I want to talk about the well when I go, but some might not see it's got anything to do with the Thomas Swan River, and I could take 10 minutes on it. Yeah. But I, I would certainly like two minutes. Yeah, and we'll, we'll go over some of that, you know, prior yeah, to those meetings, you. but I thank you. But yeah. I think we should stick to uh, to the uh, to the resolution, though. Yeah, the plan is we're, after our meeting is done, we're going to talk about our, who's going to be talking, we're going to bring up the annual agenda and our documents, and we'll just go through it all. Yeah, thank you. So then, again, on the uh, Director of Public Works, any other further discussion? Being none, all in favor? It's carried. 7.2, result of the Protective Services Report for October be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. <coughs> Under the animal control, it lists four complaints involving cats, three complaints involving dogs. Uh, what were those dealing with and how did we handle them? Oh, uh, Fire Chief Fedorchuk is going to be late to the meeting. I cannot answer those. I'd have to get back to you. We can note that and then and get that answered for you. Yep, please do. Further discussion? I go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, I was just looking at the bylaw under that report, and when we just did that tour, I thought bylaw reported to the director of recreation. No, oh, Chief Fedorchuk. Okay. Oh, Chief Fedorchuk. There, that makes sense now. You'll get over to two Fedorchuks here. Soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Hey. Director and chief. So, for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. So I'll just note that uh, question for uh, uh, Chief Fedorcha. Yeah. Okay, 7.3. Result, the result of the October 2022 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received. <coughs> Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? Councilor Medwood. I have a few questions. First one being is how does the handy van actually work or operate? Uh, well, people have they have to book in advance the day prior uh, for use, and we have two casual drivers that uh, that are available. As soon as we get a booking, we call them to confirm, and then we let them know the times, and away we go. So that's, that's pretty much it. All bookings are done uh, the previous day. And we have our two casual drivers that take care of all the service. Okay, so is this a, this isn't like a unionized position where they have specific hours or certain hours? So anybody can book the handy van at any time as long as there's a certain no. amount of prior notice given? No, they would be the casual position so they don't receive the benefits, but they're still on the union. Okay. But the hours, they, it can be booked anywhere between 8.30 and 4.30 as long as it's been... That's right. And we can go outside those if the driver agrees. Okay. Go ahead. 
Can you just, like, the abbreviations, some are very self-explanatory, and then others, I'm guessing, but I don't know what they are. Um, so, like, the WHL slash E, and then the AMB slash E, for instance. Like, I'm assuming those are medical trips and then shopping trips, right? Mm -hmm. So, what uh, are those two categories? Yeah, or business, like, the, to the downtown area. Mm -hmm. uh, ambulance, medical, WHL. I don't know, I'd have to... To be honest, uh, Chief Secretary, your Actually, CFO, CFO Ganita wants to respond to that, so I'll go ahead. Uh, WH slash E is wheelchair chair elderly. Uh, AMB slash E is ambulatory elderly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Further discussion? I have one go ahead. question. Do we charge? For this service, like, do they, they pay? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's in the fee schedule. Council will be getting it. Okay. That's all I wanted to double check. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Dipper Mayor Memorial. No, I was just pointing that you had yeah. a question over there. Oh. Okay. Thank you. And do the fees cover the expenses, like we break even? Or? Well, we receive grants, but no, it doesn't cover it. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a service again. Yeah, it's a subsidized mm -hmm. service. Yeah. And we'll get into more of that as, as you know, we talk about fees and all that. But again, if there's services that you're not too sure of, feel free to come in and, and speak with the directors because they can give all mm -hmm. updates on how all this works. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all in favor? It's carried. Council reports. Start with uh, Council Midwood. Um. Well, I believe the only one I report on as chair is utilities, water, and wastewater. So I did have a lovely tour yesterday. I have a wealth of stuff to learn. <laughs> and uh, Director Harvey has sent me one bylaw for me to review. And um, once I get through a very busy month in November, I'm probably going to tap into them for any other bylaws or policies pertaining to the committees I'm on so I can start reviewing them and get a better understanding. But other than that, I think that's about okay. all I have for that. It'll, it'll start pouring soon, so. <laughs> <clears throat> but you'll all start starting to feel a little bit more comfortable too. Uh, Councilor Boychuk. Okay, so what I have to report is a bit of an update from Director of Recreation. And uh, Brendan looked into it, and apparently the services have changed within Westman that um, <coughs> the ability to offer the service that would support Live Barn uh, is available or should be available. Um, it does come with an increased cost, and he was waiting for a callback from a Live Barn representative about that. Um, he's going to draft up a report with the information on the increased cost and will send it in. Once he's got that, so it's looking promising. Perfect. Okay. Anything further? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor White. It's been pretty busy. Uh, I had the pleasure of attending the uh, Albert Charter and Princess Center AGM, and again got exposed to the wonderful things they do in that uh, that entity with the different degrees of learning and education, community involvement, and the things they do to make our valley better and uh, very expensive membership is a dollar for a year mm -hmm. so i'd encourage the rest of our team to consider that then uh, a significant day uh, your worship yourself and a handful of others uh, councillor morio and councillor paul i believe it, attended the child uh, daycare center grand opening 90 kids 40 kids 40 40 kids and now a place to go and, and food and warm and looked after and taught and, and educators open to the community as a whole which is it was awesome. I want to thank uh, Francis Chartrand and her team and the local MMF for the work they do. Uh, I also had a meeting recently on the 4th uh, with Staff Sergeant Duncan, and as I alluded to earlier, I think it's uh, Councilor Medwin and, and I and Mr. Morio, we've got about three days to get together for coffee with them. I can pick a date and see if you're available. Uh, if you have a special day you can or cannot, please let me know. Then we had the cow meeting uh, on the 8th, which we all attended. And an important day to me, and I'm sure to everybody, our listening audience, the Remembrance Day on the, uh, on the 11th, and uh, pretty moving when I consider we all sit here warm and comfortable, well-fed, we can hear and we can read and we can write, and we all have some degree of education because of those guys who died for us. 
And I think it's really important for council as a whole, when they can, and there's obviously lots of sorts of reasons why you can't go, but I think as leaders, uh, I don't get off and being a leader, as leaders in our community, I, I think if we attend those things when we can, uh, it's important to our communities to, uh, to show respect for that. It's, I think it's the most important day in our community, personally. Uh, and then the Community Foundation Dinner, uh, I think they're close to $4,396,000 of which all those monies go back uh, to the Valley. And then those of you who have much money in the bank account, or a little, you feel free to donate to the Community Foundation. And in fact, depending on the amount, you can designate a place for that to go. For example, uh, one family in town say they put in a couple thousand. They want the interest, because only the interest goes back to the community to Swan Valley Sport Fishing. So you can target where you want your money to go, or you can leave it up to the committee. Working on with Councilor Mario and Tanya sooner than later, hopefully, we want to get that bridging up and going. I am waiting for the hear from the other municipalities who the members are on the Medical Foundation. I haven't been told that, so it's a little difficult to move forward unless I have that information. Uh, Councilor Powell and Councilor Mario and I have talked about recruiting doctors. There's, and versus, of course, there's meetings that we can meet with the resident doctors in Brandon and or Dauphin, and I forwarded it to you guys today. There's a graduation coming up in April for nurses at the PAW. I think it's pretty important that one or two of us could go to the PAW, hand out some cards, and tell them we have some stipends. We have now $3,000 for an LPN, $5,000, help me if I'm wrong here, for an RN if they come and practice for two years in our hospital. So there's money available, which this, this entity has designed. And, I, I'm, I, I'm sure we'll be asking Sue for permission to attend that. I met with Gary Wojcik, I think he's still superintendent of schools over there, or chair of the board rather, and he wants to get together sooner than later to decide, help the Ukrainian people who are coming to our community. But until I know who the members are of the Ukrainian entity from the other side, uh, and I met with some of the people at uh, Immigrant Services, and they said there's no sense meeting until we have the people who are representing the other, uh, other governments within our area. Uh, I also met with uh, Minister Anita Campbell from the MMF, and she's very excited about the possibility of being involved in our recruiting. It could be recruiting nurses, doctors, or RCMP officers. There's some evidence between the RCMP and MMF that perhaps rural recruiting hasn't been as uh, aggressive as it could be. And I don't think they've been out here. You help me. Have they been out here for years? No, not, so, not since I So heard. maybe we'll have to do some of that work for them. Maybe we can nudge them and say, hey, come on out. We'll take you over to meet the boss, the second in command at the MMF there and uh, in town, local, and uh, we'll, we'll design some plans. I don't think we should wait for it. I think we should be proactive and make that happen. Mm -hmm. uh, the G4, I think I talked to the mayor. I know I talked to the mayor, and uh, hopefully we'll invite the MMF and the other indigenous groups in the valley when we host it, because we can do it. We're hosting the G4 or G7, whatever it's going to be. We can't assume the others will do that, but we can certainly. The fire department. Uh, Mr. Fedorchuk Sr. has told me that you can have this week, I believe, his son will tell us to donate kid children's toys. I think they're supposed to be new. Take them to the fire hall and they're going to fill up a police car or something with kids' toys. They're on sale for $9.99 at the co-op right now or any other source and tell them, sure. Oops, that was not a paid commercial. Uh, they have out front, I got a scathing nudge from our girls in the office, teasingly. They have a bucket out here somewhere in the office. Some of us who don't go out that door may not know of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's for those that don't have. So you can go to your local grocery store and you can pick up these packages are really inexpensive. Not everybody has all the gifts we have. So I, I'd encourage you, I think they wanted a non-perishable food item end of this week. Oh, the Soon. deadline is December 2nd. Yeah, so you've got a little time to do that. <clears throat> I can't read my writing after that. So uh, it's a Christmas time. I, it must not have been important. It's all important. <laughs> Some have a, one is really important is that, uh, and you got my picture of the, uh, the Veterans Hall. I would, put, I would put the Veterans Hall ahead of every priority that's on my list, because I can't. Those people uh, give their lives. And so uh, hopefully we can fix that little sidewalk thing for them. That's it, Your Worship. Thank you. Maybe about five minutes too long, but uh, that'll be okay for this time. <laughs> Councillor Powell. Uh, okay, so. Tough act to follow, but, uh, yeah. you know. Well, a few of them, I've, I've, yeah, I've been on a few of them, yeah. Them. yeah. <laughs> um, we attended this community foundations dinner, of course, and it was a wonderful, it's my first time ever, and it was very great. 
Um, I've talked with the library, and we just recently set up a meeting. We we're gonna we set it up for the 30th of this month. I think it was booked uh, for, the, for the first meeting there. Um, they are, I believe, looking for another board member. Um, they're in the process of that right now, and hopefully they'll, they'll have that. Um, we also toured the water treatment plant and the arena, and really got an, an insight into what is behind the scenes of this. And, and learned a lot and went, wow. So, yeah, it was great. That's it. Thank you. So then on the library board member, is that a uh, member from the town of Swan River that we're looking to appoint, do you know? She, you know what she never said. That's okay. I just talked to her. Because we have two that are appointed, but uh, perhaps we'll look into to see mm -hmm. if it's one of our own. Because I thought that we did have appointments that were full, but anyway, we'll look into it. Okay. Super Mayor Memorial. Um, a few things. Um, as part of my new portfolio with uh, general government uh, services, I've been preparing for our upcoming uh, shared services negotiations with our neighboring municipalities and how to strategize and bring forward information, uh, particularly to a lot of their new councils or new uh, reps to their negotiating teams as to um, how things are shared and whatnot. So um, and hopefully those negotiations will go uh, forward um, in a positive direction this time so I was also at the uh, Albert Chartrand uh, MMF Child Care Center grand opening which is, was very good um, a very well needed or extremely needed uh, extra spaces for child care in this community which is even though it's another 40 new spots that are already full even before the place opens up uh, we still require more spots so it's uh, a never-ending challenge I was also at the Remembrance Day ceremony, and I echo Councillor White. It was a very um, nice ceremony that was put on, very simple, uh, but uh, the message and the thoughts uh, for the meeting of the day are, are still there. So, uh, yesterday I had a meeting uh, with, uh, along with uh, His Worship uh, Jacobson and CEO Poole and Mr. Harvey with our local uh, EMS uh, management. Uh, representative regarding our air medevac operations and how it affects the airport operations now that the province has changed um, or ad added more um, air medevac operations to cover southern Manitoba and not on a mon Monday to Friday um, 8 to 4.30 schedule, it's uh, on and out 24-7 schedule so that has now have some significant impacts to uh, the airport commission's operating budget regarding maintaining operations at the airport for clearing snow uh, after snow falls in the middle of the night or on the weekend where we traditionally just do it uh, Monday to Friday or um, in the past when it was just uh, lifelike uh, and stars um, for emergent calls um, then there would be an emergency clearing in the off hours but now that uh, the air medevacs are looking after non-urgent um, calls and they're coming in at 24 7 that's now increasing significantly the amount of aircraft that are accessing the and then murphy's law it's when they come in at night is when it's right after snowfall seems like so uh, there's some financial impacts there that uh, the airport commission will get briefed on at their next meeting but uh, we have some <clears throat> game plan going forward and some letters going off to the minister of health and minister of infrastructure um, <clears throat> with that, um, to seek additional funds for the operation of the airport to maintain 24-7 uh, clearing operations after snowfalls or when required for that. So, um, he also gave us a, a quick synopsis on the EMS staffing here in the valley, uh, which is around 50% capacity or staffing level for the positions that are there. Um, staffing especially for the valley as compared to the province is very difficult just like our other healthcare staff with our geography our location is one of the major challenges uh, for retaining people here or bringing them here uh, if they do come here they stay here for a while until more attractive locations i.e winnipeg brandon or communities just outside the city of winnipeg open up and then they move right back back there so um, there are some plans with their recruitment strategies to go forward to help these staff that, but uh, with changes with the EMS training and with that, uh, there's some significant delays 
and with their contract negotiations of not having a contract for five plus years now, um, there's some tension being built there and it's not a very, uh, a lot of the staff are, how do I put that, uh, are being discouraged and are seeking employment elsewhere or other jurisdictions, i.e. Saskatchewan or other jurisdictions in Canada where they do have agreements and better pay and, and working conditions. So. Uh, so while the Air Medevac operations is helping, which is keeping a lot of our local people here, uh, our non-Valley born and raised or trained individuals do their tour of duty here and leave at the first opportunity. So that brings back to uh, Councillor White's uh, thing where we have the ongoing LPN to BN challenge of getting that brought here. Uh, we need to have work with uh, Manitoba Health and education to bring back the paramedic training that we had here previously uh, to get the students that are from here interested so that they're trained here and then they stay here. As I would say uh, without a doubt the 95% of the staff that are remaining here are either born from the valley or married into somebody from the valley and are here and have roots. That's why they haven't left themselves. Um, and on a final note, um, Next uh, Sunday is Grey Cup. The Blue Bombers are in it, so go Blue Bombers, go. Unfortunately for your Riders fans, we are taking over your dressing room, so at least you can host the Grey Cup, but we're in it, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and that is all for me. All right, thank you. <clears throat> uh, just for question. Ahead. Okay, question. Relative to the data that is going to be shared with the Airport Commission, who will be taking that to the airport commission to share it? The yeah, members. The members, so I believe it's Mr. Councillor Bobick and yourself, so yeah. you'll be getting a education session from administration on that. It's, are you on that committee? No. Okay. You're okay with it? Yeah. All right, fine. Thank you. Airport, yeah, it's yourself and Bobick according to the list here. <clears throat> All right, for myself, uh, not to uh, regurgitate what has already been said, but definitely uh, on some comments about the AGM uh, at the Albert Church by the Friendship Center. Uh, it's, it's, it's always uh, great to go there and, and visit. They're such a friendly group and a, and a very uh, important uh, organization in our community. Uh, I had mentioned in my opening statement to them that they're not only one of our largest uh, um, landlords in, in Swan River, but they're becoming fast growing one of our largest employers as well. So they're doing an excellent job and, and relationship with the MMF, which is only benefiting everyone here in the Valley. Uh, yes, the Albert Chartrand Friendship Center, um, Child Care Center uh, was a highlight of that week and uh, the opportunity to meet with Minister Chartrand and Mr. Ledoux and, and Janai and uh, Campbell uh, and also uh, Fleming, who I was corrected. I didn't realize he was a, a minister, but I was I was corrected, but I, and I did apologize. But uh, we did have some good chat with uh, Minister Campbell afterwards on the recruitment possibility, and I have spoke uh, since with uh, Minister Chartrand on some items as well. So we're going to be meeting up hopefully in the next week. We were going to do it this week, but it just nothing is working out. So. Hopefully in the next week or two we'll have a chance. On uh, the November the 4th that Peter game, I was uh, glad to, to attend to receive a check from, uh, many of you would have seen, but from the uh, Tim Hortons group here in Swan River. A uh, fairly large contribution to uh, the Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation. And this went through their cookie sale drive or smile cookies and um, I thank everybody that actually committed to purchasing cookies and uh, it's a huge contribution and just for the you that know that uh, those monies will help to use purchase equipment in our hospital and facilities in the valley not only in Swan River but also in Benito as well and uh, it goes a long way so we do thank anybody that makes contributions to our health, Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation. Um, Remembrance Day was mentioned earlier but I was in interested in the service and it made me think about the icons of remembrance, what I was kind of thinking about, and that was the, they had mentioned the surge and the, the poppy and the veteran. I thought it was pretty moving uh, service. 
Next week, we're heading to the AMM, where we have the opportunity to learn, to collaborate uh, with uh, fellow um, counselors and other counselors across the province. It's, it's, it's a big convention, and there's lots uh, to learn and to see, and uh, our chances to meet with uh, ministers from the government to uh, give them you know, what we would need to talk about in our community or in the Swan Valley. So uh, there'll be a lot of opportunity for us to, uh, to get out there and, and uh, meet with these individuals. I'm sure that you'll all enjoy the time and the learning experience. Um, I also, in the last couple of weeks, have been meeting with uh, Reeve um, Gade and also Reeve Mahalchuk. And so I have to say it's been very encouraging. Uh, I've spent a lot of time with them, either per, in person uh, or over the telephone, and sometimes maybe like up to two or three times a day. So it's it's been it's been really great, and, and the uh, the dialogue has been very open, and I'm looking forward to that. And, and we'll be having meetings with them uh, soon. Those dates are kind of being set up right now, and uh, because not all the municipalities have have their committees appointed, um, we will not be. Uh, attending any of those you won't get invites to those uh, committees until all the commitment or the uh, appointments are done I know that council Powell mentioned library but that's only between two municipalities and, and they have their appointments done already but uh, for the rest of us we'll just have to wait and that might be in sometime in December and when those commitments or those appointments are made it's going to get busy you're going to be running and catching up not only on the duties and responsibilities at this table but also to your uh, committee appointments as well and getting caught up on all that so there's there's going to be a lot happening in the month of december and in the months that follow so with that that was me um mr pool just a uh just a couple of points for council to get in their conflict of interest forms if you have just disregard that in the the election finance statements and a reminder to take uh, the code of conduct course prior to the end of March and if I can interrupt for those members of council that <clears throat> had uh, thought of, I thought that I could just re-log in again you can't uh, we've taken it before but I was trying to log in and use my old credentials you have to create a new account to to take it again right they completely wiped out the system so you have to re-register yeah. uh, and we will go over the AMM package uh, after the meeting today uh, for economic development the meeting that was scheduled for 11:30 tomorrow morning has been moved to 10:30. I don't know how that affects I know that's last minute but if, if anyone can make a 10.30 meeting for uh, that pitch. I can still make 10.30. Me Perfect. too. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. And uh, the cheer board deadline is December 9th, not the 2nd, so I'm off by a week. And uh, I will be looking for, we're setting up a G4 agenda item, so I'll be sending that out. But uh, dates, I will be looking at dates. It's gonna, you know, December's going to be very busy, but... Uh, if not mid-January, if we want to keep with the first Monday of the month, it might be February. But. Yeah. I think that like it's important for us to get that meeting too, but I think it's important for us to get the shared service, the yeah. fire protection and all that kind of stuff sorted out. So yeah. the, the G4 might you know be you know shadowed by some of that stuff, but we can definitely start to talk about uh, some dates yeah. you know in mid or beginning of uh, mid-December or or January sometime. Yeah, okay. That's it. Okay, go ahead. Just a query, uh, a wonderful gift from Tim Hortons. You mentioned you're passing that those monies would go to purchase of equipment. Was that a paddock or was that go to the foundation? It goes to the foundation and then when there's requests made by the hospital or from Benito uh, Center, then it's, re it's, it's considered and then if it's approved by Prairie Mountain Health and the province, then we could purchase it. The funds will be come out of whatever department is within our budget for uh, the Health Facilities Foundation. I'm not sure you answered my question. Is it only for equipment? No, not necessarily. Okay, that's all you need. Thank you. It could yeah. go for hypothetically, it might even go to recruiting. Well, it, yeah, it'll just go into our general. If it's approved. It'll go into our general. That's fine. Yes. Thank you.
and we do have a resolution that if, if it ever had to be that we would make contribution from the Health Facilities Foundation towards the CT scanner as well. Perfect. So, yeah. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Thank you. So, eight uh, new business, 8.1. Result of the variance order 2 2022 for 219 8th Avenue North, lot 7, block 30, plan 370, be approved. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morial. Discussion? Go ahead. Um, I took a to, uh, drive by there, I guess you could say, to just take a, an eyes on um, of the building and how it is in relation to the curb and whatnot. Um, from what I can see from the, the curb and the map that was provided, uh, the deck and the lift that's proposed would almost be entirely situated on the concrete pad that's already in front of that home. So it wouldn't be taking up any or a very small amount of the existing grass that's there. So, um, and as long as the owner uh, is aware that once the deck and the lift is installed, if the water sewer lines, I don't know where they come in in the, the house there, if they're aware of our policy that if there's uh, any need to tear up the front yard to get into the, the home for that, that the deck may be a casualty of that operation at their expense, not the town. If they're fully aware of that, then I'm in support of that. Mr. Harvey? <coughs> yeah, and their water lines are just redone a couple of years ago. Uh, so they're aware of the cost, but I can reiterate that. Okay. okay, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.2, you missed it, Councillor White. Result of uh, Jason Delorier boy, be appointed as the ratepayer representative to the Swan Lake Watershed District Subcommittee. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.3, whereas the Association of Manitoba Municipalities has provided Council with an opportunity to have a member of the Town of Swan River sit on the Manitoba Provincial Municipal Justice Advisory Committee, and whereas the appointment would be a great opportunity for the Town of Swan River to be represented on this provincial committee and provide input from the community on policing and public safety issues, and whereas the municipal appointee may participate in this committee by teleconference. Therefore, be it resolved that the Town, of Swan, Town Council appoint Deputy Mayor Morio to this committee for the four-year term commencing December 22nd. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Again, Cal or De Deputy Mayor Morio has served on this committee, I believe, for the last three years, right? Or three years, last four. four. Okay. <clears throat> 8.4. Oh, are we doing this now? Before budget? <laughs> Excuse me. We we can. It's a we can, we can hold off. We can contact them and say that. Well, I'll read the resolution. I guess we'll see where it goes. Then. So, result of the town of Swanover approve and pay a grant to the Northwest Regional Immigrant Services towards an uh, event to celebrate 25 years of immigrant services in the Swan River Valley in the amount of, and I guess we really didn't have a discussion about this, so what were they asking for? Uh, I think kind of whatever we could give them, they gave us a list of their expenses. They, I believe they listed it, uh, Councillor White has it open here, but I believe they listed it as possibly waiving or reducing the rental fees for the hall and or any other the money value we deem appropriate or suitable. I think that's correct. If we have the rental of the hall, or if we have a grant equivalent to the rental of the hall, we would get that money back when it paid for the hall and we would make even. Okay, discussion, go ahead. Um, you had mentioned that if, if we had to wait for budget, but since their event is on 
Okay. December 17th yeah. of this year, it would fall under this year's budget. So, um, and then I concur with the interpretation that they're asking for the waiving or the reduction of the hall um, rent, which is $1,312 for that event. So it's either the full amount or a portion that we see fit. So, go ahead. What have we done in the past for nonprofits that have? It's been very complicated. It's not really cut and dried. We we had a, 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 a kind of like a piggy bank where we put money in. At one time, when it was used up, then we we've done everything from a complex application process that took a lot of time and effort to passing a resolution that no grants be given whatsoever at any cost. And so uh, we've done everything under the sun. Uh, I guess, no, actually it was Councillor Powell first and then um, uh, who was that? Director of uh, Recreation, so go ahead. My question was exactly the same. Is okay. what, what have we done in the past, basically? On, on that then, no, Director of Recreation? Uh, just just my normal spiel here, just that it's for a great cause, but be, just be quite careful of like, the precedent that's being set with with uh, the donations because there's a lot of nonprofits around town that I'm sure would capitalize on a, on a donation like this. So it's my disclaimer, I always say, um, but that's what I'll have. Okay. And we do give them uh, a grant every year as well. Go ahead. Um, I was actually thinking more in lines of what have we done in the past with regards to rental fees for a nonprofit. So not specifically grant money but have we in the past waived um, the rental fees for a nonprofit? Yeah, as we, we've waived complete rental fees, half rental fees, we've had them pay 100%. We've had nonprofit companies this year pay 100%. Some just don't ask, uh, but we've waived 100%. We've, we've done literally everything. Okay. Half, quarter, Number out of the sky. Council Borcha. So you said we already give them a grant. What is the amount of that grant? I don't remember. Um, CFO Ganita, do you know what the amount of that grant is that we give? It's not a very big one. No, I don't think so. But it, it has been discussed for the past 10 years on trying to, even, even creating a policy. We've, we've created policies and just didn't follow them. We've, we've tried to rewrite policies and just never got to the end of it. This has been a constant uh, issue with previous multiple terms on council on what to give in grants. <clears throat> we used to provide just the, the, the waiving of the fees, but that was a decision that we made a few years ago that we don't waive our fees anymore. We grant the expenses. So the, the, the entity, you know, we still, it's still on paper that we've, we've collected the revenue, made the expense, we just grant them the, the money. So we don't waive our fees. So kind of like what Councillor White was saying, they pay for the hall and then we <coughs> essentially give it back to them in the form of a grant. Yes. Which kind of balances their books, so to speak, not necessarily ours. Yeah. And, 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 and often we've done that after, some, you know, if they paid for the hall already and then council had the decision afterwards. Uh, CFO Ganita. Well, we've been giving them an annual grant of $4,000. And I guess accounting that way lets council know how much money we've been given away in grants from year to year. So you will see that. Council Powell. Um, just wondering, is this something that happens quite often? That we, you know, you have quite a few grants. Is, mm -hmm. So we don't have a policy specific to it? We've had numerous policies. We've had policies saying we won't go over $25,000 annually. We've had policies saying we won't give $1 to a Nonprofit. We've had we've had multiple policies trying to deal with this. We just we just do we don't follow them. That's the fact. I, I think it, you know from from 
our standpoint, like, you know, I know we had this issue, we've had this issue at our office, and, uh, and it is a very hard thing to not give to people. You know, you know they're good causes, they're great causes, but there also has to be some sort of, you know, we've had to put in place, there has to be some sort of, you know, regularity to it in order to, you know, as much as, yes, you, you want to make sure you, you're helping everybody you can, but there has to be something, so. Go ahead. Uh, I concur with Councillor Powell. The, if we have a set of not even so much guidelines, but structure, then it's fair for everybody. And on one hand, I see us as council, we're government. We are functioning off of taxpayers' dollars. The taxpayers can do their own donations to charities of their choosing. The council is not necessarily responsible for that because we aren't collecting tax dollars for those purposes. So every dollar we're giving out for essentially a charitable cause or reason is then taking away from the ability to administer services we're required to provide. But then at the same time, there is kind of balancing that. How do you show that leadership and support, uh, especially in particular nonprofits? Uh, in this particular case, uh, like some of the nonprofits, they're doing these events, but they're charging per plate. And my understanding for this one is it is free for the community and they're not taking any um, money for attending or whatnot. So yeah, I'm kind of on board with we need some structure. Uh, Tipper Mayor Moria. Um, like this is up been here for a while already and like as CEO Poole says like we've had policy we've tried numerous policies different versions but every time you think you create a policy and you got everybody covered your next meeting you have a grant request that you never thought of that doesn't fit the policy or tugs at your heart or whatever but uh, we've been there we've done all kinds of policies and no matter how you structure them uh, through an application process, a percentage, certain criteria, the benefit to the cost ratio of what are we going to get out of it. There's always those other ones that all of a sudden pop out that don't fit or an anomaly from the policy, which you make a decision on and it sort of throws the policy out the window. Then when you start doing that, then it will, when you do it for one, it pulls out your heartstrings and then as Director uh, Fedorchuk mentioned, you open the floodgates. Well, you did it for one, you do it for the other, and then it gets harder and harder. Then you get back to the starting the ball over again. You've got to create that policy. And then you bring out all those policies that you had, and you take the best and whatever. Like I understand it's a, it, it's a challenge. So at the latest point, Council's agreed that we're dealing with these on a one-off basis and going from that because I agree having a policy or a guidance sheet to help you with that decision is the best tool there but when it comes to this it just keeps it's an ever it's a moving target every time a different entity comes because it just sometimes it just doesn't fit or it's a new organization that wasn't in the community for so yeah so it's i'm not opposed to looking at it and coming up with a value tonight um, but uh, just for particularly the new council members, it is an ongoing challenge that every time one of these comes, we have this same debate as to how we go through it and whatnot. So it's very difficult. Um, and just, uh, if you don't mind, Councillor White, just the departments all rely on their revenues for rentals and so forth, and this is one of them. And uh, we do have to be careful because um, it can become a, quite a slippery slope. Um, because there's a lot of organizations that don't receive grants from the town of Swan River. Go ahead. Let's take basketball, for example. I coached for 40 years. We asked for money often. Sometimes we got turned down, sometimes it was accepted. It was a provincial tournament, they had different rules than a, a regular tournament. I accept that, and that's reality. But somehow, in my heart, I see immigrant services, and that's a different thing. It slides in not near Remembrance Day services. But these are people who've come to our community, are living in our community, working in our community, and benefiting our community both ways. We learn from their culture as they learn from our culture. So I see this as, it's that slippery slope up. That's why we got elected, to make decisions on slippery slopes. 
And uh, I think, personally, I would support this concept. Am I completely in favor of that budget? I'm wondering, like the gender, I say, there's a few things on that list I'm saying. Do you really need uh, chair covers for 500 bucks? You need table runners for $40. Uh, I'm saying, well, cut those out of there. I still want to give them the, 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 what they want, but cut back. There's places they can tighten that budget up. And could be ch Some people can't afford it, so I can live with the, the free ticket, I guess. So uh, immigrant services are, are a special thing in our community. So I would certainly be in favor of some donation. So we had a debate about a resolution and never made it to the table yet because we don't have a number in there. So I'm asking then if, if we want to add something there or not. I can move that uh, we give them $1,000 towards the hall at Kitchen Booking. They can find the other 300 somewhere else. All right, then. Can I ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. So when's the last time we reviewed our rentals and stuff like that? Is that on a yearly basis? Yeah. Is that done? And I'm just wondering if we could possibly, I mean, it's one night, correct? You're looking at, it's in the winter, there's obviously heating, things like that. I mean, to cover at least the expense of cleaning the hall, paying someone to do that, and the, the heating of it would be realistic. Like, maybe we're not making, but at least we're covering the expense of what we're putting out to do that. Okay. And so we don't know what that expense would be. Our, our, our fees aren't set to cover the whole expenses, not even close, not even, not even respectively close. Mm. So when's the last time they were? They do go up from year to year, but it's just, you, you want it booked. Mm -hmm. You try and, you know, we look at other facilities and towns <clears throat> to see where we are uh, across the province, but we don't come close. Like we're not near where everybody else is charging? No, we're not near from recovering our expenses. Oh. So saying, you know, breaking down the rental cost to see what we can get away just to make sure that we cover, we're already not covering. Right. Okay, go ahead. I will second the council. Okay, well, I have to read the res resolution then. Result of the town of Swan to approve and pay a grant to the Northwest Regional Immigrant Services towards a, an event to celebrate 25 years of immigrant services to Swan River Valley in the amount of $1,000. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor uh, or Deputy Mayor Juan Morio. <clears throat> discussion or further discussion? Go ahead. Um, with everything that has been discussed, I would kind of be airing myself on the fact that if we've already given them $4,000, another thousand on top of that is going down that slippery slope and kind of on a fast track. Uh, we were all extended invites. I have not had a chance to respond yet, but I personally would have no problems with if they had a silver collection, mm -hmm. dropping money for the value of what I feel a meal would be of uh, 25, 30, 50 bucks, whatever, in their silver collection and allow them to kind of recoup those costs by those who do attend and are willing, and that's maybe something they can do at their doors, just have a, a silver collection to recover and recoup these costs for expenses. I actually thought that we were paying for the tickets, but anyway, I didn't realize it was for free. <laughs> Further discussion? Okay. So then on the motion, uh, all in favor? Opposed? What do we have here? Do we have? Two to four. Who? What are you? I, I'm, not, I'm okay with it. Okay, so Two then it's four. carried. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> Where was I here? 10.1. Councilor White. Resolved that accounts as followed hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 29574 to 29638, totaling $139,507.08 is listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5208 to number 5214, totaling 112000 
506 and 6 cents as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits totaling 44,631 and 63 cents as listed on Schedule C. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. I have a few questions. Uh, Schedule A, the checks. There's a check, I think it's number 29605 for Adams Contracting, 39,956.78. Is it possible to get more info on that one? Yeah, that's one where they were, uh, you had a bulldozer out at the landfill, and uh, so there was a lot of soil coming in that were generating revenue, and he was leveling it off. There was uh, trucks that were dumping the soil, and then he was out there leveling the soil off. So there's revenue to offset those costs. Okay, so th this is something we paid out or we... We paid to Adams Contracting to have a bulldozer to level out the soil. Okay, because the notes on it said the MMF daycare service and landfill contaminated soil. Yeah, so there was two things there. The one was uh, at the daycare, we put in a hydrant and a water and sewer main, and so the two jobs must have just been on the one invoice. So that MMF daycare, that's where uh, it was too deep for our loader backhoe. So we have to contract a backhoe. And so uh, we get the prices every year. And he's the cheapest with the backhoe. So okay. we get him for that. Uh, and then the other work was out at the landfill. So there's the two items on the one check. I think it was two invoices, but it's one check that gets one sent check. out. So Written that's why same. it says the two things. Ultimately, the costs are recouped. Okay. Yeah. We're not in the negative. That's correct. And I'm allowed to go, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Schedule C direct deposits. Um, can you explain what the Swan Valley Employment and Training Project and the Swan Valley School Division ones are about, please? Yeah. So um, you you want me to like get it? Yeah. CFO Gadita. And uh, with respect to Swan Valley Employment and Training Project, the town is in an agreement with the province uh, to act as the coordinator for <coughs> the Swan Valley Employment and Training Project, which is a program that um, helps uh, people who have difficulty getting jobs to get jobs. And so the province provides funding for that program and, and the funding is given to the town and then the town passes it on to the Swan Valley Employment and Training Project and work crew. Uh, with respect to the Swan Valley School Division, uh, uh, property taxes include the school taxes. And so as the each month goes by, whatever portion of property taxes the town has collected, the town is required to give that same percentage of the school tax levy to to the school division. So both of these entries, um, they're currently being deposited to our accounts, but they're eventually going to be removed as an expense somewhere? That's so something. direct deposits like instead of a check? Yeah. But so it's, th th that's money that's gone out? So we sent this money to them. That, okay. That's correct. That's yeah. what okay. That's that helps clarify that too because I was seeing direct deposit as in it's coming into our uh, accounts yes. and not going fair. out of our accounts. But okay, perfect. Thank you. That helps out. And I just want to. Okay, I think that was all I had for these ones. Okay, for the discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Ten point two. Resolve the financial statements for the 10 months ending October 31st, 2022, be adopted as received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Any questions for CFO Ganita? Go ahead. Um, any chance we could have this explained a little <laughs> for those who are not, of uh, us who are not financial wizards? Uh, CFO Ganita can go ahead and explain, but also CFO Ganita is also creating a, a training package or an education package from his 
department to explain that whole package in detail so you have a written because I agree when you look at it the first time it's a lot of numbers that spin around and it takes a long time to understand it but uh, and when you go through the budget all process too, this it makes it this a little bit easier too. But definitely deserves some explanation. Yeah, I guess the page number three would be a highlight. So that's your revenue versus your expenditures. After that page, it goes into detail of each one of those topics. So if you can, the summary is page number three in terms of revenue and expenditures. That's where I would say generally. Uh, most eyes go to. Okay. So we, we're we're sitting in an okay position right now. We're we're not expecting a large deficit or anything. That's essentially what all those numbers are telling us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think I think we can we can schedule a meeting uh, to go through this in detail. And like like Mayor Jacobs had said, once we go through a budget process, it will become much clearer. I, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not good at finances at this level. At, at this at this point, and, and I think it's fair for anybody to look at it and say, what is our financial situation right now? How are we looking and uh, going into this last quarter of 2022? So, and I'm sure that's probably what's on your minds, but um, those will be discussed or shared, you know, and maybe in depth a little bit with uh, CFO Grita. Mr. Harvey. Yeah, I was just going to say on the right side is the uh, percentages. So that's essentially how much of the budget has been spent, just as kind of an indicator. Has it spent already or remaining? Yeah. Spent, spent already? already, yeah. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Bylaws 11.1 .1, result of bylaw 22 2022 being a bylaw describing the town of Swan River Council procedures be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion all in favor carried uh, 11.2. Result of bylaw. 23, 2022, being a bylaw to establish the organizational structure for the municipality be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, second by Councillor Medwood. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. Uh, it's still missing the uh, deputy mayor and communities in bloom under the uh, representatives to be appointed on the committees, co committees list. Oh, I need to have it there for the third reading. I believe all the numbers were updated for number of. Um, yeah, they are missing. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's that's my fault. I apologize. It will be there for third reading. Yeah, no worries. So we have that on our list. Further discussion. All in favor. It's carried. 11.3, resulted in bylaw 24, 2022, being a bylaw to provide online assessment services to the town of Swan River B. Red a second time. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. 11.4. Resolved the bylaw 24, 2022, being a bylaw to provide online assessment services to the town of Swan River, be third, or sorry, be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? This is a recorded vote, so all in favor? It's carried. So third readings are always automatically a third or a recorded vote. We had nothing in camera tonight. Uh, no. And we could do one. Okay. So result of the regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 8.34 p.m. Moved by 
called <laughs> Deputy Mayor Morial, second by Councilor Powell. All in favor? An all time. We are adjourned. Quickly. Well done. You were Did you say 834? Yeah, that's why I looked at you. It's, it's like 854. Oh, 854. My glasses are terrible. It's like 854. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like,